Hello everyone. Many remember the video where I showed a package with old Soviet devices, among which was this small power supply IPS one. In general, my acquaintance with these units dates back to the early 2000s, when I first got to work with and see such a unit. I immediately fell in love with it and many years later even replicated the circuit of this power source. By the way, there's a video about that too. All the links are in the description. But apparently, all of that wasn't enough, and in the end, I bought it. The unit is practically from storage, in perfect condition, and today I intend to give you a full review of it. The IPS-1 is a laboratory-adjustable direct current power supply, produced in the USSR. There was also the Mars power supply, and the IPS units themselves could have minor differences, particularly in appearance. These power sources are really quite attractive, compact, and quite good in terms of circuitry, with short circuit protection and the ability for coarse and fine adjustment of the output voltage. It doesn't take up much space, and the output parameters are sufficient for many laboratory tasks. On the front panel of the power source, there's a small analog voltmeter, next to a power switch with an indicator lamp. Just below, there are a couple of knobs for coarse and fine adjustment of the output voltage. At the very bottom are the output terminals. The device's casing is made of sheet metal, but it has a nice paint job. The cover has a bunch of holes for natural cooling. You can also see them on the back panel and at the bottom of the casing. At the back, there's a fuse compartment, a grounding terminal, and a power cord. The device was manufactured in the 90s of the last century and it cost 25 rubles at the time, which was quite a reasonable price for such devices. For comparison, the Digital Portable Multimeter Electronics MMC-01, which functionally is about the same as the DT-830, cost nearly 130 rubles in the late 80s, and that was a huge amount. For many, it was an entire month's salary. In terms of specifications, our unit can be compared to the PS-1502 power supplies. The output voltage ranges from 0 to 15 volts, despite the fact that the front panel states it ranges from 2 to 15. The output current is 1 ampere. There is current protection, or more precisely, current stabilization. If, for example, the output is short-circuited, the voltage will immediately drop almost to 0, and the current will be limited to 1, 1, and 2 amperes. The instability of the output voltage is no more than 1% with a deviation of the mains 220 by plus minus. 10%. The output voltage ripple is no more than 20 millivolts. The power consumed from the mains is no more than 55 volt amperes. The weight of the source is about 2 kilograms. We will be testing it today, but before that, let's open it up to study the internals and for maintenance, if needed. Inside, everything is very neat. At the bottom, there's a fairly large iron transformer for 15 watts, and at the back, there's a heat sink with a power transistor. On top, there's a control board. There are no microchips here, everything is assembled on transistors. The printed circuit board is small in size, made of bed and axe. So, let's get back to our unit. The assembly is neat. The wires are bundled with threads, and there are a couple of fairly large capacitors for power. Ideally, they should be replaced, as well as the capacitor on the control board. But for now, everything is working, the ripples are generally small, so I'll leave it as it is. Since I'm too lazy to explain again how the circuit works, there will just be an insert from a video where I've already done that. In front of you now is the circuit diagram. It is built on six transistors, five of which are low power. The power transistor is a composite one. According to the diagram, a KT829 is installed. I installed a much more powerful legendary KT827, also a composite with reverse conductivity. In the circuit, I have minor deviations that do not affect its operation. There are four variable resistors, two of which are trimmers, and the others are intended for coarse and fine adjustment of the output voltage. The first resistor is responsible for current limitation, a kind of current, protection. If desired, this resistor can be brought outside. In that case, the unit will have the capability to limit current. The original circuit is designed for an output voltage from 0 to 15 volts in a current, up to 1, 1, and 2 amperes. And believe me, this will be enough for most tasks. 
but the power of the circuit can be increased by replacing the power transistor and reducing the resistance of the current sensor. The second trimmer resistor will allow setting the upper limit of the output voltage. It should be noted that the output voltage of the circuit is always lower than the input voltage, in this case, by about 2 to 3 volts. The reference voltage source is assembled on a pair of KT315-361 transistors and a Zener diode. Then the output voltage from the reference source is fed through a divider to the amplification stage. The current limiting circuit is as old as the hills. The current sensor is represented by a low resistance resistor. If the output load draws a current above the set limit, the lower transistor will activate, as the voltage drop across the current sensor is sufficient to turn it on. Following it, the second transistor will also open, which will dampen the signal at the base of the control transistor, causing it to start closing, and consequently, the output transistor will also close. Well, now, let's give it a little test. Plug the plug into the socket, start the power source, and check the accuracy of the output voltage setting, remembering to set the voltmeter needle to zero if necessary. As we can see, the accuracy is good and everything adjusts properly. The fine adjustment allows changing the output voltage within the range of 1 to 1 and a half volts. The power source is not afraid of short circuits. In such cases, the voltage drops almost to zero and the current is limited to 1 or 2 amperes. Now let's check the voltage stability under load. We'll set the output voltage of the power source to 12 volts, which is shown by the lower voltmeter. There is a resistor whose resistance is selected so that when powered by 12 volts, the current in the circuit is about 1 ampere. The flowing current is shown by the multimeter on the right. When the load is connected, we see a voltage drop of around 60 millivolts, which is quite good for this little device. Under the same measurement conditions, 12 volts at the output with a load current of 1 ampere, the voltage ripple did not exceed 60 to 65 millivolts. And this is the peak value while the root mean square is about 4 to 5 millivolts. The oscilloscope's bandwidth is 60 MHz. Filters are turned off. The ripple is a bit more than it should be, but this can be attributed to the electrolytics. The unit is over 30 years old, so it's forgivable. Well, another power supply unit for my collection. I was really looking forward to it and this unit will definitely take an honorable place among other devices in my retro laboratory. And with that, this video comes to an end. Don't forget to rate it and share it with your friends. And to stay updated, you can find my other resources through the links in the description. All that's left for me is to say goodbye. As always, this was Kazinov Ka with you, and until next time, bye.